Hello everyone, today Health Ninja talks about endometriosis. Endometriosis is the presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterine cavity. Endometriosis affects 5 to 10% of women of reproductive age and is identified in approximately one third of women undergoing diagnostic laparoscopy for pelvic pain or infertility. The condition is hormonally influenced with symptoms often exacerbated during menstruation. Endometriosis commonly occurs in pelvic locations such as the pelvic peritoneum, uterosacral ligaments, bladder, rectovaginal septum and ovaries, forming endometriomas, the latter often referred to as chocolate cysts due to being old blood-filled cysts in the ovary. Less commonly, Endometriosis may be found in sites such as the umbilicus, abdominal scars, and even the pleural cavity. Endometriosis and infertility are closely linked, with approximately 30 to 40% of patients facing challenges in conceiving. Severe cases may involve anatomical distortion characterized by periodnexal adhesions and destruction of ovarian tissue. However, Surgical treatment has been shown to improve the chances of fertility in individuals with endometriosis. The pathophysiology of endometriosis involves a response to hormonal changes, leading to cyclical bleeding and inflammation. Two prominent theories explaining its origin are Samson's implantation, which suggests retrograde menstrual flow causing the implantation of viable endometrial glands on the pelvic peritoneal surface and Meyer's coelomic metaplasia, involving the de-differentiation of peritoneal cells that transform into endometrial cells under hormonal or inflammatory stimuli. Additionally, genetic and immunological factors may contribute to its development. In advanced cases, Endometriosis can spread to distant sites, including the lungs, through vascular and lymphatic pathways. Endometriosis presents with various clinical features, including severe cyclical non-colicky pelvic pain, chronic non-cyclical pelvic pain, and fatigue. Other symptoms encompass deep dyspareunia, dyskasia, endometriosis deep within the pouch of Douglas heavy bleeding during or between periods, difficulty in conceiving, and sensations of bloating or nausea. Additionally, endometriosis can manifest as cyclic hematuria or dysuria with urinary tract deposits, cyclical epistaxis with nasal passage deposits, cyclical rectal bleeding with bowel deposits, and, in rare cases, cyclical hemoptysis and hemopneumothorax with lung deposits. Diagnosing endometriosis can be challenging due to the limited accuracy of clinical examination. Various diagnostic approaches include imaging studies such as transvaginal ultrasound, which is effective in detecting endometriomas but may have limitations for smaller lesions. MRI is another imaging modality particularly useful for identifying lesions larger than 5 mm, especially those in deep tissues. However, laparoscopy remains the traditional diagnostic method, providing the advantage of allowing biopsy, surgical intervention, and staging of endometriosis. Biomarkers, specifically CA125, have been investigated for their potential in diagnosis, but their current accuracy is considered unreliable for definitive confirmation of endometriosis. Management of endometriosis medical therapy focuses on symptom control, utilizing NSAIDs for pain relief and hormonal suppression through options like combined oral contraceptive pills, progestogens, and long-acting reversible contraceptives. GnRH agonists are employed for symptom relief, but their use is limited due to potential side effects. Aromatase inhibitors are considered for refractory cases. Surgical treatment options include laparoscopic ablation or excision, particularly for superficial lesions, emphasizing fertility-sparing surgery.
Specialist surgery may be necessary for extensive adhesions or involvement of other organs. In cases where conservative treatments have failed and the woman has completed her family, a hysterectomy with euophorectomy might be considered. Hormone replacement therapy, HRT, is recommended post-surgery with the option to defer initiation for up to six months to prevent the potential activation of any residual disease. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos.